Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trufinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge. Well, Gwent has been released for a few months now, so I have uh, been taking my time getting used to the new systems, the new cards, because pretty much every card just changed compared to the original open beta. But uh, in this show, we talk about specific Gwen cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today, we will be talking about what I, and of course everybody, calls the Witcher deck or a Witcher deck. An Ilfgaardian faction deck focused on, you guessed it, Witchers. So I've been playing around with a lot of cards and decks in particular. And uh, for now, this has been one of my favorites. So you can see the team composition right here and we'll go through this in detail. But the main strength of this deck lies in the double usage of the Vesemir Mentor card in combination with Ymir as a leader. Vesemir boosts all witches you have wherever they are by one. If you pull him back and play him again using Emir, you boost all your witches in your deck by two without your opponent being able to even counter that move because you're doing it in the same turn aside from maybe something like a spike trap. Now, Witcher cards are actually pretty limited in Gwent, which is another reason we go for Nilfgaard since most witches are neutral both in the story and in Gwent we could technically choose any faction, but since Nilfgaard made use of the Viper School Witchers to do their dirty work during the war, they are categorized under their faction, under the Nilfgaardian faction. This allows us to make a deck that contains a whopping 12 Witchers that take advantage of Vesemir's ability, boosting Vesemir's total point value to a possible 26 points. So, 11 witches that get boosted by 2, which is 22, and then 4 for Vesemir himself is 26 points that can't be directly countered and are spread out evenly, so even after they're put on the board, uh, there's very little your opponent can do to even block that, aside from sporadically trying to damage your units. On top of that, witches of course also have extremely powerful abilities, so let's explore those a bit further and go along the other cards in the deck. So the most obvious addition is the trio of Kaer Morhen Witchers, Vesemir, Askel and Lambert. Each of them pulls the other two out of the deck when played and a lot of decks already add them for the easy 9 points and the deck clearance they provide. Two extra cards out of your deck means you have more control over the cards you'll pull next. In this deck they can actually provide a whopping 15 points in one go, surpassing even old spear tip and raw power. Just be careful to avoid accidentally having two of them in hand and wasting those valuable points. The next duo is Nilfgaard specific, the Viper School Witches, Serret and Aux. These two work in tandem. Aux can lock units, either one or all copies of a target when Serret is in your hand. A pretty handy option to have and his power is not too shabby with it at 7 when Vesemir has been used twice. Serret shares the same power level, but is the damage dealer of the two. He can dish out 3 damage to any target on his own, or 5 damage with Aux in your hand. This means that Serret can represent a total of 12 points in a single move. To continue our tour of Nilfgaardian Witches, we also include Letho Kingslayer. His ability allows you to duplicate a card on the field in honor of his monk disguise from The Witcher 2, if you remember that. He used that to kill Foltest. While you can't duplicate any deploy abilities this way, it does allow you to copy any passive or order abilities currently in play by either you or your opponent. This makes him incredibly versatile, especially when paired with his possible power of 8 if Vesemir has been used twice. Letho is also perfect to copy our next Witcher, Ivo of Belhaven. Ivo has an order ability that allows him to do 2 damage to any target. The fun thing about him is that he gains a charge every time another Witcher is played on his side of the board, which means that he could potentially deal 2 damage every turn depending on your hand. Use Letho to copy Ivo and you can even double up on your damage output and fireball tossing. The only downside to Ivo is that he needs to be on the melee row to deal damage so he could be countered by him being moved by your opponent somehow. Another must have in this deck is the alchemy card Trial of the Grasses. Everybody familiar with the games know, knows what this horrible process does because it's responsible for turning normal humans into witchers. So it causes the mutations that turns 
normal human boys into witches, although the uh, chances of that succeeding are actually pretty low. But back to the card. This card allows you to boost a witcher up to 12 power, which is handy to heal up any damaged units on your side of the field. If the target is not a Witcher, however, it is first damaged by 6 before it gets boosts back up to 12. This limits the possible point gain on non-Witcher units, but allows you to use this card to destroy enemy units of 6 or lower power, making it very versatile for a card with only 8 provision costs. The final golden additions to the deck are optional. Any combination of our favorite Witcher is valuable, but my personal preference goes to Geralt of Rivia and the Geralt Erden cards. The Rivia card allows you to destroy a unit with a power of 8 and up, which makes up for the lack of big hitters in this deck. To complement that, Erden resets all units on a row to their base power. Removing boosts is often more interesting point-wise than straight up damaging units, especially against Squiatel and consuming monster decks. You can also add Petisar Gwynleaf to the deck, as I did, to add another singular reset option. Another golden non-Witcher card I use here is Isbel of Hag. This card allows you to pull the top card from both your and your opponent's deck and choose which one you keep and which goes to your opponent, but only once on command in the next turn or later since it's an order ability. Not too special on its own unless you play this at the end of the match. If you start the final round with card advantage or with an equal number of cards if your opponent plays the first card, you can draw another card when your opponent was already forced to pass. This way you get an extra card while your opponent can't use theirs. Just remember to play Isbel as your second to last card so you can use her order ability while limiting the risk of losing her. If you use Leto as your final card, you can even copy her to play two extra cards, almost guaranteeing you a win. Who said sorceresses can't play nice with witchers? Another benefit from using Nilfgaard as our faction is that we can also use the only bronze category Witcher cards in the game. The Viper School Witchers aren't especially useful on their own, they banish the top card in your opponent's deck, but they can be occasionally handy by accidentally removing powerful cards from play or even on purpose when your opponent puts a specific card on top by using something like Albridge for example. Pair this with a possible power of 6 with Vesemir, and we have another must-have for the deck. The rest of the deck is filled with lower power but still useful Nilfgaardian soldiers. The most interesting of which are the Magna Division, which just boosts itself by one each turn if it's still alone on its row. And the Nausicaa Sergeant, which boosts itself by one every time you play a deploy unit, which is most of the units in this deck. These are not extremely powerful, but can be played in the first round while still generating enough points to stay in the game. All while, of course, preparing your Witchers for the real fight. And that's pretty much it. You can check out the deck composition a final time right here, so you can make this deck for yourself. And uh, with this deck, you have strong units and a variety of tools at your disposal to tackle almost any opponent. Just like the Witchers included within. Thank you guys enormously for watching, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, I'm really enjoying the new Gwent as it has been released right now and I'm definitely gonna make more episodes of this show as we go along. So any tips or suggestions are very welcome and I'll check out everything that comes down in the comments down below. Thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!